How much do you pay? Ten. Yeah. Per month? Yeah, per month. Nine euros. Nine euros, correct. One yes, a whole gig. One full gigabyte. Can you believe that? Um, it's 30 minutes. Oh, no, 300. 300? Yes. And 300 tech. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Alright. As promised, fission and fusion. Um, Got that? Now, uh, <coughs> I was talking about fission just five minutes ago, saying that it means to split. So here's an example, okay? You've got your uranium-235, and you fire a neutron at it, and what happens to it? It breaks into two lighter elements. So this one becomes a uh, krypton, and this one becomes, uh, I think, barium, is it maybe? Or I'm not, I can't remember what BA is. And also, three neutrons break off. Okay, so it's like uh, this is the uranium. You fire a neutron at it, and it breaks into two, and three neutrons break off as well. This is an example of fission, where you split a heavy uranium into two lighter elements, and some neutrons break off as well. Okay, so. Um, as an example, I just want you to note this as an example. So you don't have to draw the picture, but you should at least write down what happens. So a neutron plus a uranium becomes uh, Kr plus Ba plus three neutrons. Can you see that? 10n plus U235 becomes 92Kr plus 141Ba plus three neutrons. Example of fission. Nuclear Huh? I can just write it or draw it. Whatever. Yeah, it does, yeah. Because you might think it depends on the how it was struck, but actually it always becomes this. for the equation but they could ask for you to explain or to give an example of fission yeah continue yeah. so <coughs> the definition uh, what is nuclear fission nuclear fission is a nuclear <coughs> process <coughs> it's when an atom splits apart into smaller atoms and the process, now you don't need the next part, but it's an important point. The process gives off a lot of energy. And you actually use this energy in nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors. For more information, please ask North Korea. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're saying they're denuclearized, but I think it turns out their nuclear power plant collapsed underground. So I think it was a case of, yeah, yeah, we're going to denuclearize after the plant collapsed. So um, I think there are. <coughs> Seven <coughs> countries with nuclear weapons? US. Five countries, is it? Five. US. US. Yeah. China. China, yeah. Russia. Russia, yeah. Iran. Iran. Iran, yeah. Israel. Wait, do they have nuclear weapons or nuclear power? Do they have nuclear weapons? They have both? Iran? And Israel. No, are you sure Iran? I don't think Iran does. Israel, Israel. Israel does. And Pakistan. Yeah, Pakistan. And Iran? Are you sure? You would know more. It's more your local news. Do they have nuclear weapons? Iran? Yeah, Iran, okay. Iran. 
six. I thought it was seven. Oh, the UK. The UK, of course. The UK, yeah. Don't they? Yeah, I'm sure they do. They might not be too happy about their government as well. They might not be able to admit it, but uh, <coughs> deep down, I'm sure they wouldn't be happy. Uh, yeah, but you know, even if they're brainwashed, deep down, you're not going to be happy that you have no electricity and no food, and it's because of the government, you know. Yeah. Anyway, continuing. So. How can we use this process to make a nuclear weapon or nuclear energy? So you notice in the picture here, you might realize, oh, hang on, if three neutrons break off, then maybe I could have these neutrons hit more uranium. And that's actually what happens here in this picture. So one neutron hits into one uranium, and then you would like two or three even of the neutrons to break off, and they hit into two more. And then they hit into two more. So you see what happens is it's, it's like um, uh, you have one, <coughs> one uranium breaks into two, releases energy, and then neutrons fly out. And then these neutrons hit into more uranium, and then they break, release energy, and neutrons are released, and then they hit into more uranium, which is you guys, and then break and release more, okay? So this process is called a chain reaction. And each time, notice what happens. The energy in this picture doubles. So here you get one piece of energy, one unit of energy. So then at the next level, you get two. And then at the next level, you get four. So this process very quickly, exponentially, releases a lot of energy. GP. GP, yeah. So this is why nuclear weapons are so powerful. Because with each, with each split, you double the energy until all the atoms are used up. So, chain reaction. Um, and also for vocabulary you need for the exam is first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation. So with each generation, the energy in this picture doubles. Now, I didn't tell you what this is. Whatever it is, it releases two neutrons. But of course, you realize in this picture here, you could actually have a triple, because three neutrons come out. So you could have one, three, nine, twenty-seven. It doesn't really matter. The point is, like Wookie said, it's GP, it's geometric. So a lot of energy. Uh, so chain reaction and generation. I think if you could draw the picture, it would be helpful too. Oh, actually, this is a uranium two, three, five. I don't know why they only have two in the picture instead of three neutrons. Okay, continue. Yeah? Continue? Yeah? Okay, so, a nuclear chain reaction a nuclear chain reaction is a nuclear reaction in which the heavy isotopes like uranium or plutonium splits and the neutrons released by the fissioning of the atoms strike and split other heavy atoms which as a result hit one after another and so on. Uh, chain reaction is the main way of getting energy. 
Now, I don't, you don't need to write this definition down because this is just me explaining it formally. But in the exam, they might ask you to explain it. So you can put in your own simple words. So in simple terms, what is this chain reaction process? Simply, what is it? This chain reaction process produces... Ah, you start speaking without thinking. This is the problem. Uh, somebody <laughs> think and tell me, in simple words, what is a chain reaction? If you were to put in your simple words, Go for it, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah, the atom breaks yeah. and releases energy. Then it breaks more atoms, releases energy, and more, and so on, and so on. Yeah. So they might ask you to explain this in the exam. So there's no, there's no formal definition. Just use your own words, okay? I know you're all looking at this and writing it down, but this is my words. Use your words. No? All right, fine. Huh? But I just told you to use your own words. This is my words. You doubt my ability to understand students' words? I've been teaching non-native speakers of English for 10 years. I've seen some very terrible English. I can, trust me, I can understand you. That's good ability. Hmm? That's good ability. What is? Understanding yeah. students, yeah. yeah. Ah no, I never I never correct on an empty stomach. It's one of my rules. Yeah. Uh, to help me do the corrections, I make sure I'm well fed and I have a strong drink with me, because it can be quite depressing correcting the exams sometimes. Why? You know, like I look at it and like that. Oh, this is heartbreaking. I can't I can't cope with this. All those months of teaching and they don't remember anything. You know, it's hard. You know, it's tough. It's tough. You don't understand. No. All right. Can I continue? You have this written down in your own words. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, this chain reaction process it doesn't always work. So, for example, let's imagine um, you're the uranium atoms, and I'm the first uranium atom. So I break, and I hit these two, and they break, and they hit you. Okay. But let's imagine, um, instead of having all the students here, we only have two uranium atoms, maybe one here and one here. So when these guys break, maybe their neutrons don't hit anything because there's lots of empty space. You get what I'm saying? So for this process to work, you need to have enough uranium. If you don't have enough uranium, then when they split, they don't hit into anything. Okay? So what we do is we have something called critical mass. It's the mass you need to get a chain reaction. Okay? If you don't have enough critical mass, then there's not enough freed neutrons to continue the process. But if you do have enough critical mass, then there are enough freed neutrons to continue the process and you can get this chain reaction. Okay? So there's a minimum amount uh, that you need called the critical mass. And if you have enough you can get this chain reaction. So those nuclear bombs that Kim Jong-un wants to make, you need to make enough uranium. Because if you don't have enough uranium, you can't get this process. Okay? So there's a minimum critical mass. It looks like similar to activation energy. Activation energy? What's that now? In chemistry, yeah. you need to have a minimum yeah. to activate a process. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay, interesting. Uh, so what is the activation energy? Like what? To to react with another, they need minimal energy, which is called activation energy. So you need a minimum mass of minimum the reactant. Minimum energy, like minimum energy. Okay. What form is the energy? Chaotic. Okay. I don't know. Okay.
Okay, continue. Not yet? Okay. process for good? How can you use it to make energy? So we have this as um, a nuclear reactor. Now you'll need to draw this in a moment, but first I want to explain how it works. Okay? Um, <coughs> inside here, can you see in the red, these red lines? That's uranium. Now this uranium is decaying. So it's releasing a lot of energy. Okay. So as it releases the energy, what happens is it makes this liquid, and this liquid is sodium, this liquid gets very hot. Uh, so what they do is this liquid gets pumped into this uh, uh, tank full of water. So when the cold water comes in, you can guess what happens to the water? It turns into steam. And this steam turns a AC generator that you learnt about in fields. So this generator makes electricity. So then the water comes out very hot. Not steam, but it's hot. And this water then um, just comes out of the power plant. So it actually means for people who live near a nuclear power plant... Does anyone live near a nuclear power plant? Nobody? Okay. Uh, if you did live near a nuclear power plant, you get free hot water. Hot water. Yeah, because there's lots of hot water that comes out of the plant. So this is given to people for free in the neighbouring town. Mm. Okay. And they need a cold water supply, so it should be near a, a river or, or, or something like this. Cold water supply. Um, these things here in black, these are called control rods, and we'll talk about those a little bit later. But what the control rod does is it covers the uranium. So when you want less energy, the control rod goes down a little bit. And then when you need more energy, you lift the control rod and let more radiation out. It's like a, like a, like a, like a shield. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe you need more energy because there's, it's winter and people need more energy. So then you move the control rod up the energy comes out, makes more heat, and this turns into electricity. And then maybe you need less energy, so you put the control rod down. Okay. So, uh, in the exam, um, <coughs> there's a lot here in the picture. You don't really need everything for the exam. Okay. I'll tell you what's most important for the exam. Uh, the three most important things for the exam is the uranium in the diagram, the control rod and um, the, uh, the the sodium which is used to take the heat okay now I would like you to draw all of this but in the exam I don't think they would ask you to draw all of this it's too much but what they could ask you to draw is this part now this part here uh, this part is called the reactor so in the reactor, you have the uranium, you have the control rod, and you have something like sodium, which takes the heat. Okay. So I would like you to draw all of this, but just remember for the exam, is this part here, the reactor core, which is what you need to know for the exam.
stuff beautiful. That's the warm water that comes out. Warm water or hot water? Warm or hot, it doesn't matter. Warm or hot? Hot. 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 Yeah. What is the efficient, efficient version? Efficiency? Oh, I don't know. Um, a lot of power plants, the efficiency would be between 25 and 50 percent. To 50. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's really hard to be more than 50 percent efficient because you're wasting energy here. You're you're losing warm water. Well, I guess it's not really a waste because the people in the homes are going to use it, so... Maybe this one's 50%. Um, a, co a, a power plant like a coal or oil is maybe 25. What? Oh, this is a power plant. <coughs> to make electricity. Yeah, so you see this part here? Uh, when the steam enters this, it generates the electricity. You remember we did um, the AC generator? So there's actually one of those in here. So it spins, uh, it spins a wheel. Generates electricity, AC. Very expensive, very, very, very expensive. Uh, the power plant's expensive, the maintenance is expensive, and then the decommission. The decommission means when the power plant has lived its life and no longer any good, you have to then carefully dismantle it. You know, that's expensive. Everything's expensive. Uh, mostly, um, Shamsa, uh, the reason countries use nuclear power is not really, in my opinion, because it's cheap or it's clean or whatever. It's mostly political. What I mean is, like, um, the country wants to be more energy independent, less dependent on other countries for energy. You know, so like France has a lot of nuclear power plants. Um, but that's because people in France think they're a superpower when they're not. So they want to be energy independent. They don't want to be dependent on other countries, you know. Ireland used to. Oh, of course not. We're too small. Too Ireland small. Ireland is small. For a European country. You don't think so? All right. Ah, you would know. They're very big. They're very big. You would see them. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? They, they always have a very particular shape, and I don't know what the advantages of having that big... Um, yeah, I don't know, actually. Yeah, sure. Um, you're right. They all look very similar. There must be some good engineering reason for doing this, but I don't know what it is, actually. No, I don't know. I think there probably is a good engineering reason for it. Like, maybe this is the safest shape to use or something. I, I don't know. Because you need to make a... You're built... There has to... For safety, there has to be a lot of concrete. A lot and a lot of concrete. So perhaps when you're making large concrete structures, it's safer to have them sort of curve in. Because perhaps if they were straight, they have more of a tendency to collapse. Uh, but maybe having it curved in a little bit... It, it, 
it's a stronger structure when it's so much concrete, you know. Uh, and a circle, a circle is a stronger shape than square. So like this is why tunnels underground are circular rather than square because they're better, they're, they're better, they're a better structure. So it could, it, it could simply be an engineering safety reason. Uh, I would guess. Uh, okay, continue. You have this drawn? No. Nuclear, so this uranium here, uh, this is called the nuclear fuel, and it's the material that is burnt. Now, I put burnt in quotation marks because you don't burn it the same way you burn coal or oil, because it naturally burns, it decays. So, um, the most common fuel is uranium and plutonium. This is what's used in nuclear power. Uranium and plutonium, these are the two common ones. Um, so the only thing you really need to know here is that uranium and plutonium are the common fuels for nuclear power. And the other thing you need to know is the process of mining, refining, purifying, using and disposing is called the fuel cycle, the nuclear fuel cycle. Where does uranium come from actually? Uranium. Yeah, where do you get uranium from and plutonium? Where do you get it from? Anyone know? <laughs> and uh, plutonium from Pluto, is it? No. North Korea. No, no. Where do you get uranium and plutonium? Corn. Hmm? Uh, oh, good, but no, you don't have to go through that much trouble. Somewhere else. No, no, there's actually, you can, uranium and plutonium mines, you can mine it, like coal. It's in the earth. However, it's not everywhere in the earth. I believe the place with the most uranium and plutonium mines is Australia. Australia. I think so. Uh, so, what you have to do is you have to dig it up, you have to clean it, you have to purify it, you have to get the uranium out, then you have to put it together into a, a rod, and then you have to use it, and then you have to carefully put it, dispose of it. Okay, you can't just put it in the bin. You have to carefully get rid of it. Uh, different countries do different things with their nuclear waste. So, um, does anybody know what uh, France, what does France do with their nuclear waste? Does anybody know? France. In the, in the ground. No. Well, not quite. Uh, send the... Into space? Yeah. No. No. Uh, in France, they put their nuclear waste in concrete at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, what do they do in the UK? Uh, no, not the UK. They're very friendly neighbours. What they do is they dump it into the sea and uh, it washes up in Ireland. So, friendly neighbours. Uh, what do the Americans do with their nuclear waste? No. No, they do nothing. They just leave it in the nuclear power plant and that's it. They just close the plant and don't do anything with it. Mm. Okay? So this is a this is a problem. What do you do with your nuclear waste? Because you can't you have to do something with it. You can't just not do something. Uh so um yeah. I don't know what's the best thing to do. See, the problem with what the French do is then they've now discovered that the waste is leaking out of the containers at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, what the Americans do is not a good solution because it makes a problem for future people. Mm -hmm. And then what the Brits do is not great for uh, Ireland because it, it just means they dispose of their waste on Ireland. So uh, this, this, is, this, is the biggest, this is the big problem with nuclear power is the waste. You know, huh? You could bury it too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is probably the best thing to do. But you know, maybe in a hundred years, this waste you'll start to see it come up to the ground. Do you know? So like, it's really. I don't know if this is really a good good thing to be doing. You know, what what to do with it? The uranium when it burns. Uh, at some point, it, the amount of radiation that comes off is not enough to generate power. So, you, so this rod is still radioactive, but it's not useful anymore because it's so low. So you have to do something with it. You can't just, you know, ignore it. 
It's the canyon, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, but the half-life is thousands of years, you know. So it's decaying, but it's still decaying enough to cause a problem, but not enough to be useful. So it's so small that you can't really get much energy out of it, but it's large enough that, no, it could still be harmful. Possible? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much waste that is, though. I don't know. I think it might be a lot. It might be too difficult. Anyway. Um, when we think of the uranium, it's not actually a 100% pure piece of uranium. Because if it was 100% pure piece of uranium, it would just instantly explode. So what they do is, when they make the fuel, they actually mix a material with the uranium to kind of slow the process of decay down. And this material is called uh, a moderator. And its purpose is to reduce the, the rate of decay. So in fact, uh, I think it's something like 2% uranium and 98% something else. Or I, I, can't, I can't remember the percentages, but anyways. Uh, a, a moderator is a material that reduces the, the speed of the neutron and it slows down the process. Um, so it, it's basically, uh, let me see, do you do something in chemistry called a uh, catalyst and an and, and, uh, inhibitor? We, we, we do you do catalyst? Yeah. What's the opposite of a catalyst? Opposite. You don't do an opposite of a catalyst? No. Huh? Negative catalyst. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Negative catalyst? Yeah. You're not making this up? Yeah. Is he talking the truth? Yeah. Okay. The truth. Do you have a word for the opposite of a catalyst? So you inhibitor. Inhibitor. Yeah, that's not like I'm asking, is this the word? Negative Fine, negative catalyst. Uh, a moderator is like this. It reduces the reaction. Can you speed up the Can you speed it up? No, and you don't want to. Well, no, that's not true. You can actually speed it up, but the only purpose of speeding it up is to create a bigger nuclear bomb. You can speed it up by using, um, I think, if you had uranium fuel, I think you could use uh, hydrogen gas. Uh, if you were to put your uranium fuel in a hydrogen gas, you could actually could actually speed up and cause uh, more energy. Right, he's telling the truth. Negative catalyst is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it better for the other part of the reaction to keep the weight? No, you can't. If you're trying to generate electricity, it's dangerous to speed it up because if if you get too much energy too quickly, it just explodes. The only time you want to speed up the reaction is for a nuclear bomb. Uh, but when you're making nuclear energy, electricity, it's the opposite. You want to slow it down. Um, yeah? Can you what? Just the first, yes. I suppose you could just go up to here. That would be okay. The moderator is inside the nuclear atmosphere. The pure loss. Yeah, I think it's mixed in. Uh, for the exam, you just need to know that it's a material that reduces the reaction. You don't need to know how they mix it. Um, I think uh, I think a moderator material might be something like uh, carbon or boron or something like this. But you don't even need to know that. I think carbon is a moderator material. I, well, I think so. You can check it. It's, it's good at absorbing neutrons. Yeah, maybe silver and boron. I think so, yeah. Continue? Yeah. Now, <coughs> we talked about control rods. What's the job of the control rod? It's to slow down or increase the rate of, f of fission. And they're usually made of something like boron, silver, cadmium. Anyway, so you don't even need to know that. Uh, the most important thing is that they control the rate of fission. 
So if you want less energy, do you lift up the control rod or drop down the control rod if you want less energy? Drop. And if you want more energy? Right. Well, that's only, no, it could be for other materials, but we only use uranium and plutonium in nuclear power plants, so. Other materials aren't as suitable for it, because uranium and plutonium decays easily and releases lots of energy. I mean, you don't, like, uranium would just, if you had a pure piece of uranium, it would just decay by itself and explode. It's very, very unstable. It's very unstable. I think actually uranium is the most unstable element. Yeah, continue. So just to finish, we um, I, I'll have to talk about this the next day, but uh, I just want to go back to my diagram here for a moment. <coughs> now, you all know about the dangers of nuclear power plants. Uh, what is the most recent disaster? No, no, I mean, what's the most recent country to have a nuclear disaster? Japan. Japan, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 recent. Ah, there's just the earthquake. Yeah, the yeah, tsunami, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's been other disasters before, so the country before Japan? Hiroshima. No, nuclear power plants, not nuclear bombs. Power plants. Yeah, the, no. you know. Huh? Yeah? Where? Japan was one place that had a problem. Uh, Chernobyl. Yeah. Chernobyl was another place. Chernobyl. Long Island in America is another place. Oh. Okay, so there's been at least three nuclear disasters that I can think of in the last uh, 50 years of nuclear power. So they do happen. But how do they happen? What goes wrong? Well, let me explain what mo usually what goes wrong here. <coughs> So these uh, uranium rods, uh, they get very hot. They release a lot of energy. Okay, So you don't want too much energy because as this gets hotter, you know the chain reaction process releases more energy and more and more. So you can't get this too hot. So if it gets too hot, then you have to put the rod back down and let it cool a little bit. Do you understand? Yeah. So what happens when you have a nuclear disaster? These control rods, they fail. So for example, in America, in Long Island, uh, the, the mechanical arm that pushes the rod down, uh, this broke. Okay. Now, this, the problem is it broke, and also the computer panel, which says if the rod is up or down, said the rod was down when actually it was up. So people didn't know what was happening. They saw that the rod was down on the computer, but actually the rod was stuck in the up position. So what happened was this is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Now, you can't have this, because if this gets too hot, then all the energy releases at once, and so you have an explosion, which of course is quite bad. So what do they do? when the rods are stuck and broken and you can't actually uh, <coughs> put the rods down. What's the, what's the emergency backup, do you think, to try, and, to try and cool the rods down? But you can't because the rods are naturally decaying. So it's not like there's any control you have. The only control you have is with the control rods where you can, you can cover the rods. So what might be a plan B? to cool the rods down, stop them overheating. Yeah, but like how? Like what would you, like look at your picture here. What could you do, do you think, to try and cool the rods down? Water. Water, yeah. Because remember I said you need to be near a water supply because uh, the cold water comes in and the warm water comes out. So in emergencies what they do uh, here, they would open some hatch and let the ocean water or the river water fill the reactor core up. And then this water gets very hot 
and then they let the water run out the bottom. So the millions and millions of litres of water rush through the chamber to try and cool it down. And if they can cool the rods down enough, then they send in a, a team to uh, fix it then. Yeah. Now you might say, oh, that's a terrible job. It's your job to go in to the uranium reactor core and to uh, fix it. But actually, most of this radiation is alpha. So as long as the rescue team stay two meters away from the uranium, they actually will be okay. It's not as bad of a job as you might think it would be. Okay, so this is what happened uh, in America. The mechanical arm broke, and then in Chernobyl, um, there's a little connection here. Like the the there's a hole, and the rod moves down the hole, of course. Uh, but whatever this is made of, silver or carbon, uh, it melted and it fused with the with the rod. So the rod even though the arm was pushing it down, it couldn't actually move then. So the biggest risk in the nuclear power plant is right here, the top of the control rod. If the mechanical arm that pushes down breaks, that's a problem. If this gets stuck on something, that's a problem. Um, I'm not sure what happened. I know it was the earthquake. Um, in Japan that caused the problem, but I, I'm not sure exactly what broke. But the other two accidents were all caused by the control rod failing. Okay, uh, so I don't really think that's something you need for the exam, but I just thought it might be interesting to talk about when you talk about nuclear power, what is the danger point, and is this is the point where it could fail <coughs> at the top here. Yeah. Um, okay, so. That's the bad news. The good news, which we'll do next time, is we haven't actually talked about this one. Fusion, where you have two atoms, they come together and they make a new atom and they release energy. So it's the opposite. In fission, you have one atom and you split it into two, whereas in fusion, you have two atoms and you smash it into one. This process is better because it's 100% clean, it's 100% safe, and how many nuclear power plants do you think use this process? How many? Yeah. Yeah, percentage. You think maybe it's 50-50? Correct, zero. So you might say, why is this process, which is 100% clean and 100% safe, not used? Well, we'll see that next time. Efficiency is low. Yes. Yeah. That's one of the reasons. Like... And it's hard. This, what element is this? This is hydrogen. Yeah. Hydrogen 2. This one here? Hydrogen 3. Are they radioactive? No. No. What element is this? Helium. Is that radioactive? No. So th there's no radiation here. It's 100% clean. Hydrogen goes in, helium comes out. But we'll see why it's not used. There's many difficulties in this, and we'll, we'll talk about that next time then, okay? Um, right. So there's only this to look at.